Hi, Martha. Thanks for your question. I thought I'll do a quick video for you. It's easier for me than to type it all up. So your question was uh, to tell you a little bit more about niacinamide and what percentage you need to treat melasma on the forehead. So let's talk about niacinamide first of all. It's a cosmetic ingredient. It's been around for a long, long, long time. Originally, actually, it was used for oily problem skin that tends to break out because they found it has an anti-inflammatory action and it helps to rebalance oil flow on the skin. But more recently, they've also discovered that niacinamide helps to um, help people with pigmentation problem. And we'll talk about how it actually works. So niacinamide is also known as B3. So it's a vitamin, vitamin B3. It has an anti-inflammatory action and it helps to regulate sebum. So it's often used sometimes in formulas, or often sometimes, it's often used in formulas that also help people with problem acne breakout skin. But in Australia, it's been extremely popular and people are looking for it when they're treating sun damage, brown spots, pigmentation problems, and melasma. So your question was, you know, what percentage would I need to use? So studies show that about 4% is very effective at helping fade melasma and pigmentation problems. However, not all serums are made equally. Just because it says 4%, on the serum doesn't mean that necessarily it's going to work. I know, and I've personally used a product that claimed to have 10% niacinamide in it, and it didn't really do anything. So what you're looking for is not only the percentage, but you're looking for a good quality formula. You're looking for something that is combined with some other ingredients that can help with pigmentation problems, and you want a good delivery system as well. So, experimenting with different formulas is what I would suggest. It's so hard to tell you which one is best because there's just so many on the market out there. So I would be looking for something that has niacinamide in it, but other ingredients as well. So some of the other ingredients that work very well on pigmentation is licorice, for example, bearberry extract, arbutin, although arbutin is not allowed in retail products in Australia. It's a prescription product only. Um, but I know some of our friends overseas, you, you may find it in your retail products or over-the-counter products, Arbutin. Um, hydroquinone, again, hydroquinone is not allowed in Australia in retail products or uh, that are not sold outside of a pharmacy situation. Um, and also uh, we've got some uh, vitamin C, of course. Vitamin C is fantastic for helping pigmentation problems. And then we've got some AHAs as well, such as uh, lactic acid is nice and brightening. Glycolic helps to fade pigmentation by exfoliating the skin. And then um, salicylic acid is really good for that post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Speaking of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, Centella Asiatica found to be really good too. So you're not going to find one serum with all those ingredients. I'm just giving you an outline of some of the other ingredients you should be looking for to help. Oh, there is one more, resveratrol, we found to be really good on pigmentation and sun damage problems. And as a double whammy, it's really good for um, aging too. Vitamin A, that's really good for aging and has helped sun damage, although doesn't target specifically pigmentation. It's more through its exfoliating action. So really what I'm trying to say is that there isn't one single miracle ingredient that will treat pigmentation. And in fact, pigmentation requires uh, um, many, um, uh, what's the word for it? Um, a a approach that involves many different things that you need to do. Uh, the thing that came to my mind was two-prong approach, but I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, so don't worry about it. So what I'm saying is with pigmentation, the, the uh, gold standard for treating pigmentation is that you have, number one, protect your skin from the sun every single day. As soon as you see daylight, that means UV light is hitting your skin and is potentially causing sun damage, whether it's early morning, late night, late evening, when the sun's just setting, it's still daylight, UV light is still around. That means summer or winter, whether it's cold or hot. So you need to be protecting your skin from the sun with a good sunscreen, minimum SPF 30. 
And um, when you're outside for extended period of time or in the middle of the day, you need to make sure you wear a hat and you cover your, your, um, uh, your body with clothing and stay in shade and get out of the sun where possible during the middle of the day. So sun protection is number one. If you're not wearing a sunscreen because you don't like them, they feel greasy or they make you break out, whatever, it's going to be extremely difficult to see any result with pigmentation because you, we're trying to fake pigmentation, yet we're getting that stimulation constantly to keep more pigmentation happening. It's just going to be almost impossible to do it. So sunscreen is a non-negotiable number one. And whenever I begin treatment programs with my clients, sunscreen is something that I say, I'm sorry, it's non-negotiable. If you're not wearing a sunscreen, we can't even begin your treatments. So next, the treatments, things you can do at home, things you can do in a professional settings would include uh, techniques to remove the buildup of dead cells that's causing that pigmentation to appear darker. So that involves either microdermabrasion or peels. I prefer peels. That's just my personal preference. I just find them more effective. They go deeper in the skin and we see a more long-term uh, better result. Plus with some peels, they have um, anti-inflammatory actions such as salicylic acid, which is particularly good for skins that are producing too much pigment due to internal inflammation as well, which is another topic for another question. So regular exfoliation at home is going to be important. So you need to set yourself up in a skincare routine when you do regular exfoliation. Be gentle. Don't overdo it. If your skin becomes irritated, you're overdoing it. Just pull back to a level that's comfortable for your skin. So regular exfoliation and then introducing your B serum, B3 on our cinnamide serum into your skincare routine. And I would suggest also introducing a vitamin C as a minimum, vitamin C serum. Why? These two work differently on pigmentation. So Vitamin C works by stopping or blocking the enzymes that trigger new melanin production, which is the new pigmentation production in the skin. So they block the enzymes, so the cells are not receiving a message, therefore they're not making new pigment. Therefore, over time, your skin will get lighter and lighter or, or more even toned where you've got an area where you've got um, a concentration of pigment. Now, now, cinnamide works in a different way. It works on preventing any pigment granules that have been produced by your cells from attaching to your skin cells to prevent them from getting stained. So vitamin C blocks the enzymes to stop the cells making pigmentation. And niacinamide, if there's any pigmentation flowing around, any granules, it prevents the, uh, the um, melanin from attaching itself to the what we call the keratinocyte or the um, skin cell. So it doesn't get stained. So it's like a backup system for your vitamin C in a way. Can you see that? So it's best to, if you use them in combination. So if you're protecting your skin from the sun, you're exfoliating regularly to number one, lift off any pigmented cells and improve cell renewal, which will improve the health of your skin anyway your skin will instantly start looking brighter and more even toned. And then you hit it with vitamin C and isinamide. Now these two serums take time to work. It's not going to happen overnight. Where you see overnight results is with a good peel and you see an instant brightening action. But a melasma condition takes sometimes years to bring under control. Now remember, we're talking about cosmetic ingredients. So this is what we cosmetically can do to manage pigmentation. If it's a serious problem, I would also suggest you go and see a dermatologist to see how they can approach it from their end on how they can uh, retard that melanin production. If there is something else happening in the body, for example, hormones or stress or medication you can be using that's triggering the melanin production. So that all those things need to be addressed as well to remove the trigger before you can start doing the, the fading. Now, the cosmetic approach will mean that it will take you longer but you're going to get better results without, with less side effects. The more medical approach means you'll get faster results, but you'll have more side effects. So, you know, everybody has to decide what works for them and maybe a combination of both can work for people as well. So that's very important to take into account. 
One other thing I'll tell you too with niacinamide before I leave you is that I mentioned earlier on, just because it's got a high percentage doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to work. What they found through research to discover which percentage actually works and delivers result is they discovered that the higher percentage, the more uh, reactions people got, the more activity in the skin people experience, such as irritation, redness, burning, itching, and even breakouts. Very similar to vitamin A. The, the higher you go with percentage vitamin A and even vitamin C. So any actives really, the higher you go, the more potential side effects. So that's something else you need to take into consideration. 4% in a good delivery system might be perfect for you to deliver results, but does it potentially come with side effects? So we're finding a lot of the vitamins, uh, niacinamide serums, uh, vitamin B3 serums on the market, may be slightly of a lower percentage to prevent reactions in people so that people are not complaining that they're having reactions and, and then, the, and then the, um, the retailer has to deal with the returns. So it's not necessarily that it's a bad product, but it just means it's high activity. So you're going to have more activity happening in the skin. I hope that makes, and I hope that answered your question. If you have any other questions, please pop them in the comments below. And thanks again for your question. That was a really good question. Take care. Bye.